fun whole book. And a lot of people picks out sermonettes. They pick out these little parts. Listen to how this old country preacher say this. You don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ if you're not saved. You say, what? If you're not saved and you come into his presence, that'll be the last place you ever want to be. Love, love, love. If you'll turn with me to the 42nd chapter of the book of Isaiah. Father, I cannot do this without you. I confess before you that I can't. But Lord, I do know that you said who you called, you qualified. I'm on my lips of clay. clay. Bring your word to my remembrance and put a guard at my lips to do no damage to your word. Save the soul that's near his tail. Save that poor lost church member. Save Almighty God before it's eternally too late. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 13 said, The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time held my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. You understand? This is God talking. He said, I will go forth and destroy. See, when this thing starts, God is going to lay his judgments in this earth against the wicked. Those that have rejected him were waiting on the preacher. He said, now consider this. Okay, you look at me and say, preacher, I ain't got a thing wrong with me, but I'm going to climb on top of this church and I'm going to jump off. And I say, why don't you consider what you're going to do? You're going to break something. If you don't kill yourself and break your neck, you're not going to be the same way you was when you jumped off of it. Consider what you're doing. The Bible says, now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. That sounds a little bit on the other side of love, don't it? Mm -hmm. He said, consider it, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver there's coming a time when the Bible said that the mighty men, the captain, the chief, the bond, the free, will run to the rocks of the mountains and cry, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne for the great day of his wrath has come. That's the reason I called this revival. I want you to understand that if you have children that's lost, God himself is not going to send an angel. God himself is going to pour out his wrath upon the entire human race that has rejected him. Uh, uh, listen, that didn't want nothing to do with him. Uh, and I want to tell you right now, God is not a spare tire. Uh, you can't use him. Uh, how many of you ever went somewhere and never thought the first thing about, do I have a spare in my truck? Uh, do I have a spare in my car? You never even thought about it uh, until you, somebody said, your tire's going flat. And you, oh, Lord, have I got a spare? Uh, you say, what? What are you saying? You better know him and the power of his resurrection before that heart stops. He said, because the way a tree falls, that shall it lie. I want you to understand something. If you're saved, you're leaving. You're not going to the white throne judgment after you leave. There's two judgments. The Christian goes to the Bema seat of Christ. And there you'll give an account for every idle word that you spoke. There you will receive rewards. It will not ever come into play whether you're going to heaven or whether you're going to hell. The very fact that you're at the Bema Sea or the judgment sea of Christ means you were saved and born again. Means the blood has already been applied to your record. Means your name. Out of a multiplied million, John said, I saw a number that no man can number out of every nation under heaven. Listen, it means your name. 
was written in the Lamb's book of life. Why was it written there? Because you took God at his word. You trusted his death, his burial, and his resurrection. He said, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe in absolutes. Honey, listen. I don't bite my fingernails at night and wonder, am I going to make it? I've heard it straight, and I'm saying it regularly. I have heard it from the boss. The boss himself said, you'll make it. And you say, what do you mean? Listen, he said, these things things were written that you may know that you have eternal life abiding in you. I ain't waiting to get it, sis. I already got it. I've already got it. And the only thing I'm waiting on is just to change countries. Uh, but let me get back and not stray. The Bible said it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. I wish you'd listen to Spurgeon, to his message, sinners in the hands of an angry God. You need to listen to me, sinners in the hands of an angry God. Oh, children, listen. Oh, if you die lost and look up on the face of Jesus Christ and know beyond a shadow of a doubt, he's the one that could have saved you. He's the one that would have saved you. But you, you, you can't blame it on nobody else like in the Garden of Eden. When the Lord said, what is this thou hast done? And he said, the woman that you gave me. <laughs> he, she said, the snake beguiled me. You can't pass the buck then, buddy. <laughs> when the books are open, <laughs> 66 books. <laughs> oh, children, listen. When them books is open, <laughs> he'll judge you from them books. <laughs> and I want you to know. <laughs> I've heard people say, well, when I get there, I'm going to tell the old boy. <laughs> you just showed your spiritual ignorance. He ain't an old boy. <laughs> I want you to know something. He's your Lord, Savior, God, and King, and Judge. He'll judge all the earth. He'll separate the goat on one side and the sheep on the other. I can't tell it to you any plainer. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. And the choice has got to be made on this side of eternity. All oh, children, listen. You've got to understand that God will do what God said he would do. I had a message on my mind. The Lord changed it. Well, he's God. He can do whatever he wants to do. Uh, but what I was going to try to speak a little bit about tonight was uh, when he told Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house. Uh, uh, he said, and I'll show you a work on the wheel. Uh, and he showed him in the clay that was in the hand of the potter became mired. Uh, do you know that your name's in the land's book of life, but when you step out of the will of God, you get mired. Uh, you say, what happens? He puts you back on on the wheel. Uh, uh, well, glory! Listen. Uh, he said, whom I love, I chasten. Uh, and if I chastise you not, then are you bastards and not sons. Uh, you say, I don't really understand that. God don't whip the devil's children. Uh, but if you belong to him, you'll take the hide off of you. Uh, whoa! to me. He said if I chastise you not, then you bastards and not sons. I want you to know they will be people that try to tell the Lord we've cast out devils in your name. We've done many wonderful works. Then he'll say depart from me for I never knew you. Depart from me for I... Hey listen! Whoa! You don't understand telling God he don't understand. Shall the thing form say to them that formed it. You're going to tell the most high God he don't understand? That's right. You don't understand. I deserve to be here. You don't deserve to draw one breath of his air. Let me tell you something. The devil's thought he deserved to be in heaven too and got himself kicked out. Listen to me. When pride entered him, and I want to tell this church something right now. If you don't come back, don't come back. It'd be better you don't come back if you ain't going to obey what the book says. God hates schism in the body. You say, what do you mean? If you got all to get your brother, your sister, you better get it out. Let me tell you something. God said if you had 
judge yourself, you won't be judged. Uh, but if he judges you, uh, whoa, it's going to be a fearful place to stand. Uh, I believe when you get to uh, the Bema Seat of Christ, it'll still be a fearful place to stand. Uh, when you think you got it all up here, and he says it's written, uh, you don't got it up there. Uh, well, I did this and I did that. And he said, that's why you ain't got it. You did it. Uh, you did it for your sake, your glory, your honor. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Listen to me. I'd have liked to have been in the temple that day. And no, I ain't after your money. <laughs> but I'd like to have been in the temple that day <laughs> when the rich folks began to hand out all the money that they wanted to. <laughs> One little widow woman dropped in the widow's mite. <laughs> and the Lord spoke up. <laughs> and he said, Listen, <laughs> this woman has put in more than all of you. In other words, you put what you wanted, she put all that she had. You say, what are you getting at? Give God all that you have. I mean everything. You, your time, your money, your talents, because he said, I own the earth and the fullness thereof. Amen. I got news for you tonight. Since it's a revival, I'm going to try to help you. You do not belong to yourself. Right. You're bought with a price. Right. And in case you want to be a smart aleck, you're talking to the wrong preacher. Right. Oh, mister, I won't rock your boat. I'll turn it over for you. Right. In case you want to be a smart aleck, I want you to know something tonight. That God has got your number. Right. And when he decides to call it, you'll answer. <laughs> Ready or not, Job said, Thou shalt call and I will answer. <laughs> Thou shalt have a desire to the work of your own hands. <laughs> uh, now this Job that we preach about, <laughs> one time he got to think and he knew something. <laughs> oh, and he began to talk to the Most High God. <laughs> you say, what do you mean? <laughs> he started to talk to God and God just shut him off right there. And he said, hey, Job, where were were you when I laid the foundations of the earth when the bright and the morning stars sang together where were you when I stretched out the heavens and Job said whoa is me I listen when you get to thinking you know a whole lot the Bible said it means that it comes time for you to teach you have need that someone teach you again I've been on this way uh, preaching this book for over 45 Five years and I wouldn't give a single dime for a preacher that can't help me. I, you say, help you? you? A man even come to the church and I, I said, well, I left my Bible in the car. He said, well, you don't need it, Con. I know that. I, you can get up there and preach without it. I, I'll listen to me just for a minute. I, it's not what you think you know. It's what the Most High God said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he calls you son or daughter, it don't matter what anything in heaven and hell calls you. Right. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Now consider this, ye that forget God. Lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. God didn't say he was going to come forth in love. When he told Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. He said, it repents, of, it repents me that I have made man. What did he say? I think I'll just reach down and hug him. He said, I will destroy man whom I have created. Yep. So in case you think you're the disco duck, <laughs> your life is in the palm of the most high God's hands. Amen. He can leave it open and you can do what you think you're doing or he can close it in your history. You can do it and you're gone. Oh, listen to me. I hate to see them things. Sometimes I just want to turn it off on TV. I'll be watching some program where these guys get shipwrecked. They're out there blistered. Or they're ready to die. And as soon as somebody rescued them, they say, Ha ha! I beat death! And I went and got me a cold beer. Oh, you better know something like this. You didn't beat anything. God had mercy on you. Everybody that's not in hell right now, God's having mercy on. Now, I got news for you. Everybody that's in heaven, God still had mercy. Called to be absent in the body and be present with the Amen. Lord. Mm -hmm. My wife's sister died a few days ago. Ate up with cancer. Had buried her. My wife was crying. 
I went in and I told her, I said, honey, listen to me. If you could have given your sister $2 and she would have got totally well, not a thing on earth wrong with her, would you have done it? She said, yes. I said, well, after she got totally well and doing real good, would you have went back and took the $2 back? Well, no, Kenny, I wouldn't have done that. I said, then weep not, sorrow not, as others that have no hope. She wanted to go home. The Lord took her home. She ain't sick. She don't got cancer. She can walk. She ain't skinning bones. Eat up with cancer. She's well. Bless God Almighty. She's well. Listen, I'm, you may think this is hard of me, but I pray, prayed about it. And I think the Lord told me to do it when my wife's side, a mother died and she was a crying her eyes out. And, you know, she just to cry over her mom and her mom. She took a little old blanket that her mother had. She lay with it. She cried. She cried. She cried. I prayed about it. And I went in. I took her blanket. She said, no, give me that. What are you doing? I said, I'm turning it up. She looked at me and said, why? I said, listen to me. She's home. Bless God. She could have laid with that blanket until she had a nervous breakdown or a stroke or something else. But I took the blanket. I took the blanket. Cursed is the man that makes flesh his strength. Listen to me. I said, your strength's not in that blanket. It's in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I put the blanket up. Next day, she was up out of bed. You say, where are you getting at? The Bible says open rebukes better than secret love. Now, how would you like to be talked to? Let me give you, I'll come to a close. Let me give you an illustration. You come to my house. I've got a chain link fence up. i got a sign on the fence that says, beware of the dog. You start to open the gate. I say, mister, when you come in that gate, that dog will do everything in its power to take your leg off. <laughs> there have been 1,000 yeah. people come through that gate and 1,000 people left without a leg. <laughs> now, stupid, do you want to come on in? Or would you want me to look at you and say, I don't know if I'd come in that gate or not. That bit of dog, he might bite you. I'd rather you looked at me and say, hey, ignorant, don't come in the gate. If you do, you read up. <laughs> and you, would you like that? You like it better, right? Well, listen to me then. Hey, ignorant, don't let your heart stop without receiving the Lord Jesus Christ because you'll fall straight into hell. That's right. Amen. Your straw falls straight in. It won't take but a millisecond. Amen. You'll be in where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Or your heart will stop, and before the paramedics can get to you, you'll be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And if they would ask you, do you want to come back? They would say, are you stupid? <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't coming back. I'll be up here waiting on you. Can you say that? Can you lay your head on your pillow tonight and say, I am at peace with God? Track me. I can't say a, I got a million dollars. I can say I'm at peace with God. I can't say I got a Cadillac. I'm at peace with God. When the melodies been don't wait till he goes forth like a rebelling woman. Don't wait till he screams and devours at once. Nine can stand before him. If you've got something to pray about, you need to come and leave it at the altar. Leave all, bring all your broken pieces to the master potter. Let him put them all back together. And every time the devil comes to you and tries to tell you you ain't going to make it, don't argue with him. You simply tell him, it is written. <laughs> he can't stand that. It is written. What's written? And he shall give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. I'm going to get you. It is written. Well, you don't feel like a Christian. It is written. You see them people in church the other night, there's a shouting, there's a crying, there's a blessing of the Lord. You wasn't doing nothing. You was like a knot on the log. It is written. Uh, it's written. I may not shout like you do. You may not shout like I do. But I know in whom I have believed. Do you know in whom you have believed? I hope this ain't a little gas station for you tonight. You got filled up. You don't need to come back for another week. <laughs> 
I hope you come back and help us through this revival. Pray. Try to bring somebody with you. Try to get on the throne and ask somebody to come. You say, Preacher, I've got to do this tomorrow. Do you really got to do it? Or do you want to do it? God won't be second. He'll be first. He that put up his hand to the plow and look at the back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. That's the book. Are there any more wants to come and pray tonight? What if you went out that door to get in your car and you stepped right in the face of Jesus Christ? What would you do then? Could you say, oh Lord, I've been waiting. Or could you say, no, Lord, not tonight. I'm just not ready. I know I should have went to the altar, Lord, but I just... Oh, then another one wants to come and pray. Hold the church in reverence, please. Eternal Father in God, whatever needs.